morning, guys. We're coming to you live from the tattoo shop. Well, it won't be live when you see this because it'll be uploaded to YouTube. But anyway, man, my beard looks raggedy this morning. Eh, that's what you get when I don't do a lot of video editing and, you know, I shoot this shit with an iPhone myself. But anyway, today's video is brought to you by G2 Dynamics, of course. Paul's a great dude. He knows a lot about car audio, a lot about subwoofers, and that is why I chose to run G2 Dynamics in my Jeep, because after having a lot of talks with Paul, you know, he actually knows specs on the products that he sells, and that actually means a lot to me, you know, when you're dealing with somebody that knows what they're selling. And he designed the subwoofers. I mean, it wasn't like he looked through a damn Chinese catalog and was like, yeah, give me that. So, yeah, that actually means something. But anyway, let's get into the video. And it's about subwoofers. And we're going to talk about motors. You know, big motors, are they actually better or are they not? I'm going to say, yeah, motor size does have... Uh, some effect on how a subwoofer performs. That's no lie. We can all agree to that. But it, it, there's more to it than that. Because if you get a fat motor, like bam, huge, and it has a very wide coil gap, and let's say those slugs aren't really Y35 ferrite, you know, they're a cheaper grade, then uh, a smaller motor with a good grade ferrite and a smaller coil gap is going to outperform it because it's going to have more BL, the motor force to be higher. And that's what you run into a lot. Um, I don't really want to throw shade on big motor woofers that are flops, but I can name three right now. Uh, the first one would be the SCAR DNR. I mean, that woofer is like a mongoloid just... It's worthless. It's a paperweight. It's laughable, to say the least. Um, you know, we're talking very low efficiency. It's oversized, and I would be willing to say that their VFX or DDX would probably outperform it all day. And then we can move into the uh, Resilient Sounds team. And a lot of you guys love that woofer just because you like to say, I got a woofer that weighs 130 pounds. It's 130 pounds of junk. Um, because, you know, my boy Zach, he's on Team Resilient Sounds. He has the Space Jam Astro Van. And he has had teams. Uh, he had two teammate teams. And he, in the beginning, he tried running an Incriminator Audio IA80 her team 18 and they immediately blew so he you know got recones and toned them down he's like i'll just run an ia 80 per pair and they blew and then he tried better recones you know he actually got some like recones made with good parts and they blew but it's kind of ironic that he has three incriminator ia 80s on six platinums in his van right now. That's two Platinums per IA-80. And they're handling the power. They're eating it up. Where the teams couldn't. So what does that tell you? Yeah. It tells you a lot, honestly. That them big, you know, the huge motors aren't always your friend. And me having personal experience with the DS-18 Hooligan. There again, you know, you got a sub, it's almost 100 pounds. And I wasn't impressed with it. I mean, the efficiency, especially with that four-inch coil, the efficiency was super low. Not a very efficient woofer at all. And then after talking to some people that has a lot of uh, knowledge and have been around them, I talked to somebody that actually got to stick a gauss meter in the coil gap. And yeah, that big motor, it still had a low gauss. Uh, that's, you know, the amount of magnetivity. That's how you rate it is in gauss. Therefore, the BL was low, motor force is low. As to where you get a subwoofer with a medium-sized motor, you know, we're talking a 50, 60-pound slug, and a tighter coil gap, and better ferrite, 
a better design top and bottom plate, you're gonna get a lot more BL out of it. You're gonna get more motor force out of it. And it's just gonna perform better and it's gonna be a lot more efficient. And at the end of the day, an efficient sub what a smaller motor is a lot better than a huge sub that is not very efficient. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta, gotta think things through and plan ahead accordingly. Um, and that's kind of why I chose the G2 Dynamic Genesis for my rebuild. Um, medium sized motor, high efficiency, and you know, I, I knew I was coming to a point where I had to change the Jeep up. Did I like my Pride Audio? I loved them. Very good subs. Very efficient. Uh, they took abuse. But getting recones, that, that was the first thing I knew when I got them. I didn't think it through when I got them, but right after I got them, I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be a nightmare if I need recones. Luckily, they're all still good. I put on my wife's blazer, took the hooligans out. And we're going to focus, you know, I, I wanted, I would have liked to have gotten two more prides, but the problem is getting recones, no. And just getting pride in general, you got to jump through hoops. You got to deal with a dude that's pretty sketchy. Uh, and I've heard things here recently about people not getting product and so on and so forth. So, I ditched that idea. And honestly, the price of a Pride versus the price of the G2 Dynamics, it's a smarter decision to go with the G2. I know they're gonna handle the power that I have. I'm not upgrading power at all. I'm gonna keep my four Hooligan 8Ks uh, and I'm just gonna strap two 8Ks for three subs. So I'm not gonna be working the subs as hard. You know, the power level is gonna be really good with them and i'm gonna have more cone area which are to give me louder nastier windier demos which that's kind of what i'm focusing on now is getting more cone area in the jeep on the same amount of power and getting louder so at the end of the day that's what it boils down to you know do your research on your subwoofers learn how to read ts parameters and don't always look at a subwoofer and think bigger is better because honestly, it's not. Uh, you know, even bringing, I don't want to bring Sun down in this because they, they make good product, but uh, I know somebody that had like four ZV5s, 15s, they were doing 64s. They took them out and put teams in and they dropped two dBs. And it's because of the efficiency. And motor force can work both ways now. A tiny motor ain't really good because the SCAR fanboys hate it when I point this out, but the EVL. The DDX is a cheaper sub than the EVL. It's actually a lot better. The DDX has a bigger motor than the EVL. And it has smaller coil. It only has two and a half inch coil. The EVL has a three inch coil and a tiny motor. And if you learn how to read TS parameters, you're going to be like, damn. An idiot designed that sub because it doesn't have enough motor force for a three inch coil. I mean, you had to eat a little more power, but honestly, the DDX on way less power would get louder than, louder than an EVL. It's just car fanboys don't want to admit it. And like I said, an idiot designed that sub. So, you know, do I hate SCAR? No. If I was going to build a SCAR system, I, I don't know what I would, God, it would be a toss up like. Which sub would I not want to run the most, the DNR or the EVL? Probably the, the DNR. It's just a terrible sub, too. But, uh, yeah, the EVL would definitely be one of my last picks. I mean, I can think of 10,000 other brands I would rather pick than an EVL, like Boss, Dual, Rock. I, I would choose Rockville K9s over the, uh, the EVL, and that's bad. I know that they blow on, like, way less than rated power. <laughs> So, you know, this learn how to about coil gap and BL and how to determine motor force and, and all this. Do your research before you buy subs because just because you see something with a huge motor don't mean it's going to be good because in my experience, it ain't. That's, you know, a big red flag. Medium-sized motor, good BL rating on the TS parameters and all that, and you're going to go a lot further and get a lot louder. Hope this helps somebody.
Peace out, guys, and as always, base on.